go up, go up there. Just do it up there. My name is Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E Olson, O-L-S-E-N. Okay, and do you have something written that you'd like to read to the court? I do. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you for allowing me to present to you the person I know as Chip Olson, not the person that has been portrayed by others. A few months before we got married, I watched him break down for the first time. His Dalmatian, Huey, who had been, he had had from a puppy, had to be euthanized due to tumors in his stomach. Huey was with Chip during his father's cancer and death and during his divorce from his first wife. That dog had been his lifeline and his loss devastated Chip for months, if not years. He has always bonded tightly to the dogs we've had over the years. The two of us foster dogs for a local rescue group, but had to stop because Chip would get too attached to the ones that we took in. We currently have two rescue dogs, one of whom was a foster fail during the time we volunteered with rescue, who Chip loves beyond measure. He has passed not only his love of dogs and other animals to our son, not only his love of dogs and other animals, also to our son. Not only does he love animals, but all things outdoors and nature related. Early in our relationship, we often tent camped in the North Georgia mountains. We hiked and Chip taught me how to mountain bike so we could explore the woods and get some exercise. We live in a neighborhood with lots of trees and wood-like properties, and many times I find Chip with his morning coffee, sitting outside, watching the animals and listening to the sounds around him. Spending time outside helps to put him at peace when he is troubled. After we married, I watched him struggle to find a job and career that fulfilled him. He wanted to do something meaningful, challenging, and overall, he wanted to be excited about going to work. When he told me that he was applying to become a police officer, I certainly was hesitant. I knew nothing about what being a police officer entailed and had no idea what to expect. However, he was determined and I knew right away after he started the academy, he had made the right choice. Five days a week for six months, he would come home from long day of classes, instruction and physical exercise and study for the next day or exam. It certainly isn't something that every 45 year old is cut out to do. Many of our family members came to Atlanta to celebrate his graduation as they were and are extremely proud of what he accomplished. One aspect of being with DeKalb police that I didn't know right away is that officers ride alone. They don't have partners like they do on TV and in the movies. This made me even more concerned for his safety. Each and every day when he left for work, I knew that he could be put in situations with people looking to hurt him just because he was a police officer. He often worked accidents on busy roads and highways, and all it would take is for one distracted driver, and he could have been seriously injured or killed. There are any number of scenarios in which his life would be threatened, and I had to trust and hope that these scenarios never came to pass. Morning watch, which most people would know is the night shift, took a serious physical toll on him. Sleeping during the day was difficult with two dogs at home, he struggled to find quality time to spend with me and our son, and he was often just too tired. I didn't like being home alone at night with our son, who was still a baby. Eventually, Chip was assigned to day watch. I would like to highlight one particular event to illustrate his dedication to his job and how he felt about his duty. This was the Snowmageddon of 2014. He was working that day and would have normally ended his shift just as the storm hit Atlanta. I was able to get home with our son, but Chip didn't make it home until close to midnight. Our neighbor had to pick him up down at the fire station because the police car wouldn't make it up the hill. The next day, the roads were closed and covered in snow and ice, 
he didn't even consider calling in absent. Instead, he left at four or five o'clock in the morning in his own truck and drove to work going 35 miles an hour. It took him three hours to get there, but he got there and was able to then assist others who were stranded or in trouble. I don't even remember how many days he did this. I thought he was crazy for trying to drive, but he said, I have to go, it's my duty. <laughs> Nothing could prepare either of us for what would happen on March 9, 2015. This was the second time that I saw him break down emotionally. He had been looking forward to spending the evening with me and our son, as it was my birthday, and we always cooked something special together. Instead, he was mourning for the individual whose life he had taken. I couldn't find the words to comfort him, so he just cried, and I cried for him and all those involved. It is painful when someone you love is hurting, and I felt and still feel helpless at times. <sighs> My husband is a man of few words and a man of many words. He doesn't speak often about his feelings, and sometimes it's hard to see or understand what he might be going through. On the other hand, he loves to talk to people about all kinds of things. He amazes me with the tidbits of knowledge he seemingly pulls out of nowhere. Our son is in the fourth grade, and they often have interactive discussions about what he is learning, particularly if it involves science or social studies. He wants our son to not just learn for the sake of learning, but to really understand what he is learning and why. Our son's success in school is extremely important to both of us. Chip's ability to easily engage with very small children also amazes me. Recently, we were on a bus going from a parking lot to a local fall festival. There was a little girl of about three years old sitting behind us with her mother. We had learned that this was her, the, the girl's first time she had ever ridden a bus. Well, Chip made a big deal out of this with this little girl. He talked with her about it all the way to the festival, which was about 10 minutes. An hour or two later, at the festival, we walked past this girl and her mom. The little girl came running over to Chip to show him something she had in her hand. The mom panicked a bit, but then recognized us from the bus. Chip had made such an impression on this little girl just by being excited for her. This isn't the first time something like this has happened, though. Raising children is not easy. Being older parents also adds certain challenge to the process. Our children are growing up electronically. The internet, cell phones, gaming devices are commonplace in their world. As such, parents have to be more diligent to raise responsible children to help them become responsible adults. We both take this role very seriously. However, no one takes this more seriously than my husband. My son has a poster in his room that Chip once had at his desk while he was working as the administration officer. It reads, integrity means doing the right thing even when no one is watching. I believe that most people in this world do try to do what they feel is the right thing. Some are just better at it than others. My husband, I truly believe, is one of these people. I know this in my heart, as sure as I know that the sky is blue. Chip is a man who feels deeply, even though he doesn't always show it. He is fiercely protective of his family. He has the utmost respect for our military, law enforcement, and all first responders. I ask that you please take the character letters and testimonies given here today as seriously as the people who have presented them. We all love him more than words can express. In closing, I would like to take a moment to recognize the pain this event has caused Mr. Hill's family. I hope I never have to know the pain of losing a child. I cannot imagine how hard this has been for his parents and family. Both Chip and I are sympathetic to what the Hill's family has endured these last few years. Thank you again for your